Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to another new old cookbook unboxing video. Now, if you're new here and you don't know what's going on, I have a cooking show. I collect old cookbooks. I have a collection of cookbooks ranging from the 1600s to books published uh, prior to 1950. 1950 is kind of my cutoff. Um, I guess 1949 technically is my cutoff, but anything prior to 1950, those are cookbooks that I collect. And every week, books show up in my mailbox. So we, uh, we unbox them on this show on a Wednesday, and then on Sunday, you'll see a recipe cooked from one of the cookbooks in this, uh, in this collection that arrived this week. So this one, um, the envelope is already partially ripped open, so we're gonna do that one first. Oh, and there's a letter. So this book, Excellent Recipes for Baking with Fleischmann's Yeast. It's written in Pen 1910. So this is, this is from that general class of cookbooks uh, put out by food manufacturing companies, in this case, a yeast company, um, showing people how to use the product. The best way to get people to buy a product is show them how to use the product. And so these cookbooks, I, I absolutely love these cook. And I, I've said this many times before, you see something in, in this type of cookbook put out by a test kitchen. Most of these companies in this time period had test kitchens, actual rows and rows of people trying things out and, and, and throwing around ideas and trying to hone the craft to make it a little bit better, make it easier for the home cook to do it at home. And so you'd see recipes from these books, and then a few years later, you would see them in every community and church cookbook across the United States and Canada. Um, usually within months of these books being published, these recipes start showing up in newspapers across, uh, across the United States and Canada. And so I find them incredibly interesting. And usually, this one doesn't seem to have it. Um, usually these books are filled with admonitions that if you don't use this company's product, um, you're doing your family a great disservice. And the earlier that these cookbooks appear, um, some of those really strong health claims can be, if you're using our competitors' products, you're killing your family. I mean, they were straight out using fear tactics. This is gonna be a great book. And it also shows, um, on the last one we, on the last unboxing video, we unboxed a textbook, same time period, a high school cooking textbook, same time period as this. And they had a whole section on that yeast is a plant. And there you go, this is the same thing. Fleischmann's yeast is a plant which needs warmth, air and moisture for its growth. And it's guaranteed by the Fleischmann Company under the Food and Drugs Act, June 30th, 1906. That really was a turning point in marketing of, of food um, in the United States was the, the passing of the Food and Drugs Act. Okay, that book, that book's gonna show up. We're gonna do probably a few recipes from that book. Thank you very much for sending it in. Next up. What have we got? Oh. Where's this from? Royal Mail. Ha! Royal Mail. Where did this come from? Dundee. United Kingdom. Okay, so as soon as I pulled it out, I did not recognize the brand. B. Row Flower from Scotland. Thank you very much for sending this. So the B. Row Home Recipes. I, so you know, we talked about the timing of my cookbook collection. I, I collect cookbooks in English and French because those are the two languages that I speak, read, understand. But part of my collection that is missing are from a lot of the Commonwealth com countries, South Africa, New Zealand, and Australia. I don't have a lot of cookbooks from those three territories. And my English cookbooks don't really um, have a lot of, of these Again, advertising, cookbooks. So this is the sixth edition, fifth million. I don't know when it's from. I don't see a date in it. 
But judging by the pictures and the way it's printed, I'm going to say this is sometime pre-World War II. And it's self-raising flour. Okay, so B-Row is self-raising flour, which is different than American self-rising flour. Um, they accomplish the same end, but they have slightly different composition. I've got another video on the channel if you're interested. The language is very interesting. Teach your girls how to bake and cook. Teach your boys how to bake and cook too. Really, teach your, teach your boys how to bake and cook. Um, it's a very useful skill at all parts of your life. Be rogue girdle cakes. So are girdle cakes like Welsh cakes? Are they the same thing? Are they are they are they a similar thing? Are they a related thing? Um, got a recipe on the side of the fridge for uh, Welsh cakes. I love those things. The recipe for granny loaf. I think I'd really enjoy <laughs> granny loaf. Currants, raisins, peel in a quick bread. Totally down for that. Okay, this is. This is really good. Mince pies, fruit pies, shortcakes, custard tart. And I, I love that it's well loved. It is, it's dirty, it's stained. The pages are, are folded over. It was used. Um, and there's, there's writing in it. I absolutely love writing in books. People tell you don't write in books. And I, I wouldn't write in one of my books from the 1600s, but I don't begrudge someone from 1600 writing in the book and making notes. I mean, that's an important part of what these cookbooks are. They should be used, not abused, but they should be used. And if you get dirt on them, it just shows that you actually loved cooking from the cookbook. Look, look at that, it's stained, it's beautiful. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Always afraid when I cut into these. So there's a book, there's a letter, and a photograph. Um, and so the the photograph, the person Bennett says, uh, near as he can tell, it's an RAF Harvard two flying somewhere over Eastern Canada. Photos dated January 25th, 1947, while they were stationed at RCAF Downsview. So if this Harvard was stationed at Downsview, this is somewhere in Southern Ontario. And there's an airport up in the corner. I wonder where that is. So there's a mystery that I'm gonna figure out where that airport is. And it may not still be there. Crazy thing is, 1947, that could be Downsview Airport. And if you know Toronto, you know that there's no open fields around Downsview anymore. Okay. What do we got? Rumford, complete cookbook. Okay, so Rumford, Rumford put out lots of cookbooks. This copy was owned at some point by someone named Helen French. This is from 1927. Um, Rumford Chemical Works was one of the really big uh, baking soda, baking powder companies. And they put out a lot of cookbooks. And a lot of cookbooks that are in this format of hardcover, um, thick, lots of recipes. But they also did a lot of these sort of throwaway books. I, you know, this is ephemera. This is made from less expensive paper. It's uh, made in a format that was meant to be used in your kitchen and then sort of set aside when the next one comes out. And these would come out fairly regularly, always with new ideas, always with new recipes. They were always trying to tempt you with something new. Um, Rumford, Rumford did that, but they also took the, the idea that make it a tome, make it something that people are going to hang on to forever and, and cherish and pull off the shelf. Um, but they made a lot of these and Rumford was one of those companies that was really into the hard sell. This one's, uh, this one's dated a little bit later, but they still, I mean, you know, just as I sort of scanned through it, 
they're still using uh, some fairly hard sell of why you should use their their products. And I find it I, one of the things that I find interesting with with these Rumford books and the, and the hardcover ones is going through and seeing how the recipes change over time. They do change which recipes are removed and which new recipes are put in. Thank you for this one. Um, I don't have this 1927 version in the collection. So the direction that this segment seems to be going is, um, this is Wednesday, unboxed these books. On Sunday, we're going to make a recipe from one of these books that came. And then uh, along through the future, you're going to see these books over and over again because there's, there's recipes in each of these that I already know that I wanna make. So you'll eventually see all of these books in use. Thank you very much for sending them in. Um, they'll be great additions to the collection. See you again soon.